natural instinct that impels us to defend ourselves. We don't want to die and we do want to fight for our life. However, when I see one of our brother catechists attain such heights of maturity, unable to harm anyone, whilst all around him he sees machetes and people without scruples ready to carry out a sentence and kill him, yet he does not turn away but chooses death. That for me is the pinnacle of holiness. Estimates put the number of dead in Mozambique's 11-year war of independence that finished in 1975 and the subsequent civil war that erupted shortly after and raged for 17 years at over a million people. An additional three million were condemned to a refugee existence. As Portuguese colonial rule slowly came to an end and also under the Frelimo Communist Party regime and its conflict with the Renamo guerrilla, the persecution and violence affected also Christians. Many missionaries were expelled or left the country because of the fighting. The few remaining local priests had to take their place, whilst many scattered small Christian communities were entrusted to the care of lay catechists. Lest we forget, this was a time of war. The situation was very difficult. People were afraid to leave their homes, uncertain of whether they would reach their destination. There was a constant feeling of danger. The catechist visited missions regularly. He brought the Holy Sacrament to communities. He was also responsible for catechizing, training catechists, preparing Sunday services, because the liturgy of the word was celebrated in communities that had no holy mass on Sundays. It was a life of many sacrifices, travel difficulties, hunger, material privation. They received no pay for their work. Cipriano Parita, Mozambican from the Makua tribe, became a catechist during the war. He was born in the north of the country in the village of Napano into a Muslim family. He was, however, sent to a Catholic school at a mission in Mueira. In 1957, around his 15th birthday, Cipriano receives baptism and with time manages to inspire his family to the faith. On returning to his village, he begins to look after the local community. Ten years later, he marries and has seven children. He's got a family, he has to take care of everything, above all to raise his children. His community also needs him. He celebrates services, gives catechism, takes an interest in family problems. In addition, he also has to attend courses, travel, often ends up being away for a whole week. That is a life full of sacrifice. On the day of our church wedding, he was already working for the church in the community together with his friends. He used to obligate his colleagues to visit the poor as well as to help the needy, distribute fuel to those that needed it, help with work in the fields. They used to discuss these things during their meetings. He had a very good understanding with our children. He often had conversations with them. He would gather them round and talk with them with great calm about the catechism and school always about these two issues. We used to pray together, morn, noon and night. He would bring the children together and then we would go and pray together, after which they would all go to bed. He woke the children very early in the morning so that we could all pray together. Afterwards, each would go to do their duties. 
and he would also leave the house on one of his many journeys. He never quarreled or had any problems with anybody. I never heard him argue about anything. He was the kind of man who knew how to talk and be understood by everybody. My brother was very calm, patient and good-humoured. He lived a good life with his wife. His whole life concentrated on agricultural husbandry. Exactly so, as in the case of most of us, to have enough to put in the pot for oneself, the wife and the children. He was a hunter, used to catch forest animals in his nets, as well as pheasants and other birds. He also practiced a dance called Erenkeya. He organized dance evenings that people liked and to which they would come in the evening. Cipriano's life revolved around the catechism and the land. Cipriano, as a catechist, tried to be close to the people and their problems, to talk about the gospel in their language, understandable for everyone, and encouraging everyone to live a life of faith with faithfulness, in spite of the war, hunger, and the difficulties that Christians had to confront. The Nakala diocese in which he lived and worked lies on Mozambique's northern seaboard where Christians live the life of a minority amongst an overwhelmingly Muslim majority. Muslims inhabiting the seaboard are somewhat more aggressive than Muslims of the interior. Muslims inside the country where I work are simple people. We cooperate, we meet, we never quarrel. Whereas on the coast, there is a tendency to pick on people who have different beliefs. Many Christians complain that when they meet for Sunday prayer, small groups of Muslims also gather and insult them, call them names and mock them. They make noises specially, hinder processions. One senses a bit of religious intolerance in all this. The area in which Cipriano grew up lacked tolerance. Cipriano was a man with a good heart. He was never against Muslims, he did not fight Islam. He never antagonized Muslims, and there was not a single Muslim who would fight against him. All baptized into one body. What does that mean? A clan? You say clan when you become baptized. After all, we know that there are many clans. Amulima, Alukasi, Asaleje, Amulaponi. Which of these is Jesus Christ's clan? None. He does not have his own clan. He is present amongst all nations. He came for all, without exception. Mr. Catechist, I have a certain problem. There are very few of us Christians who go to church. Our neighbors laugh at us, saying that we haven't the faintest idea of what we are letting ourselves in for, that we will neither get to know God or see Him. What are we to do? There are many people who, having heard such things, back off and no longer go to church. You should strengthen your faith and continue to walk down your chosen path, even if they mock you and laugh at you, because every man must be strong and defend his faith. He should press it to his heart, even when others come out against him. Are we ready to give our lives, as did Jesus, so that everyone might live? <laughs> 